So, Clark, uh, congratulations on Ralph Breaks the Internet. Thank you. Um, it's a brilliant film. Thank you. Um, what's it like coming back with you know uh, Rich and Phil and getting to come back to this world? You know, it's kind of a dream come true. Mm. Over the 95-year history of Disney animation, we've only made two sequels before. This is the third, so it's highly unusual that we would embark on mm. making a sequel. But when they came, they started to me and they started talking about this idea of what if we went into the internet. Mm. I thought, well, that's a huge, expansive world that would be fun to explore within the medium of animation. And it's sort of the small town arcade against this huge mm. world. It just kind of felt right to, to think about what would be a great story to tell within yeah. that world. And what was it like um, getting to tell the story of Ralph and Vanellope? Because as you said, it's a small town arcade yeah. uh, to the bigger world. It's also like going from the farm to yeah. Paris. And how can you ever really go back afterwards? Yeah, it's a great, that's a great analogy. And that's kind of the way we look at it. It is sort of that sense of if you've grown up in a small village or a small town somewhere and you've never been outside of it, you feel like your world is perfect. Mm. But sometimes if you get that opportunity to visit some other place, it opens up your eyes to something you didn't even know existed. And the interesting thing, and you always want to put your characters in this situation, is you want to see how they both react to the same thing differently. So for Ralph, he goes to the internet, it's too fast, it's too big, it's too overwhelming, it's always changing, and all he wants to do is go back to the comfort of his home, the arcade. For Vanellope, her eyes are open to this world that's amazing, it's exciting, it's thrilling, it's, it is always changing in a way that she gets excited about. And she suddenly realizes, you know what, maybe my life isn't supposed to be within the small town. Maybe I am supposed to be part of this huge world of the internet. Hmm. And when you were filling out the, the world, what was it like putting in the characters? I, I talked about this with Phil and, uh, excuse me, Rich, uh, about how the characters, you had Shanks, you have um, Double Dan, and I said to them, my personal favorite was uh, Gort and uh, Spamly. <laughs> Uh, what was it like uh, getting to work with them and designing these new characters and this new kind of, like there's worlds inside worlds in this. Right. So what was it like building that? Well, I think that's one of the hardest parts of it because there are worlds with inside worlds mm. and, and everything has a slightly different shape language to it. You know, usually when you're making a film, you say, here's the shape language of the film and all the characters are going to fit within this world. But we're taking characters from an arcade, we're putting them in the internet. We have characters who live in the internet that need to feel kind of of a digital quality to mm. them. We're going to go to a, a racing game like Slaughter Race and we're mm -hmm. going to meet a character named Shank and she's got to feel like she comes from the world of an actual racing game. We're going to go to the dark net and we're going to meet characters like Double Dan and Gord and, and we're going to have to see what do those designs look like. So how is there something that kind of ties them together. That becomes the real challenge because it's too, it's going to be too weird if every character looks completely different or from a different movie. And then we put on top of all that, we're going to meet the Disney princesses and you yeah. got yourself kind of a big challenge from that standpoint. But I think the team pulled, out, pulled it off incredibly. And you mentioned there the Disney princesses. What was it like? Because again, you talked about the legacy, the 95 years. Yeah. What was it like bringing together the iconic characters that have embodied the, the essence of Disney for, for 95 years? You know, it was an incredible thing to be able to be a part of with the Disney princesses being in Ralph Breaks the Internet because I had never worked on a Disney film that had a Disney princess in it. So for yeah. me, to be able to be a part of that was incredible. Then layer on top of that, to your point, all of these characters from all of these films mm -hmm. that as a kid I saw. When I was a little kid, my grandparents owned a movie theater. I went to their movie theater and I saw Snow White and I saw Cinderella and I saw um, Little Mermaid, all of these films in their movie theater. So as a result, to be able to be a part of bringing those characters into a film was something I never could have imagined. It was mm. really a highlight. And then to have the original voices yeah. that are still with us today reprise their characters, it was an incredible experience for all of us. And was there a particular favorite, maybe Jasmine or Ariel or that, uh, that would harken back to it that for yourself? Well, you know what's interesting is I think what I loved about it was every um, actress who came in, mm. after they recorded, they met with our animation team, and they talked to them about the character, the way they saw the character, the way they thought that character would act in this scene or, mm. or, or actually be a part of the scene. And for me, that made me fall in love with all of these characters all over again in a way because each of them is so completely different. And what was fascinating was to listen to these incredible actresses who still to this day feel that that is their character. And that is an amazing thing to think about, that 30 or 40 years later, you feel that connected to it. And it, it really, it was, an, it was an incredible thing. And, you know, this isn't uh, your first uh, rodeo. You've, like I said, Wreck-It Ralph, Zootopia. What's it, what's it been like being a part of such amazing films that um, kind of redefine what animation can do? 
It's been an incredible opportunity for me. I have to say, I feel very blessed from that standpoint. And I think it's because I feel, I've been with Disney for 28 years, and I feel like over the last 12 or 14 years, the storytelling has just evolved to a whole nother level. I mean, I look at Wreck-It Ralph and then follow Frozen and Big Hero 6 and Zootopia yeah. and Moana and Ralph Breaks the Internet. And I think the reason is, is because it's become as collaborative an environment as I've ever seen before. And a big piece of that is we kind of built this thing called the Story Trust, which is the other directors and writers mm -hmm. in the building, every three to four months come and watch our movie in terms of where we're at. It's an objective set of eyes that are really honestly giving you feedback as to what's working and not working. And we get so close to the storytelling that we can become blind in a way yeah. to what is what is not working in the film. And it, it is an incredible resource to have that valuable talent telling you things that they're feeling. It doesn't mean they have all the right answers. It doesn't mean that they're always in the right place, but they're poking at something that isn't quite yeah, working. Yeah, it's a different aspect that maybe you didn't see. And so to me, that is that is a tool that you, you just can't underestimate. And it takes a long time to build that relationship where everyone feels like they can be completely honest and still feel like everyone is doing it from a supportive standpoint. Right. And for me to watch the studio evolve that process and see where we're at today has been just astounding. And finally, um, what do you hope audiences get out from seeing uh, Record Ralph Breaks the Internet? You know, I think a couple things. One that I'm really proud of is after making Zootopia, which is a film where we dive into the topic of bias, yep. an unusual idea for an animated film, but we realize you can entertain the audience and still deal with a, a deeper subject matter. And so for us, as we looked at the internet, we said there's a duality to the internet. Yep. There's that part that's really powerful, that connects people from all around the world in a way we've never been connected before. But at the same time, there's the dark side of it, the side the that kind of preys on the comment <laughs> section. Yeah, pe that preys on people's insecurities. Yep. And kids today, they have to navigate that part of the world. It is, it is ingrained in terms of the way we exist today. It ex it, it's, there's no way a kid isn't going to have to face that side of it. So for me, I look at it and say, this is a film that hopefully if we've done our job right, as the audience leaves, that conversation can happen between parents and their kids about both sides of the internet. At the same side of it, there's an emotional story. And I think that's the key. The thing that I think resonates with audiences in the end, if you do your job right, is that emotional element. And it's a story about two characters that ultimately are going to go on separate journeys. Yeah. And watching those two characters realize that and seeing how each of them handles that and realizing communication is one of the key elements, again, tying back to the idea of internet and how they're going to resolve the fact that they're going to go on separate journeys is, to me, the thing I'm so proud of in terms of the emotional quality for it. Well, brilliant. Clark, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Great. Thank you, Graham.